Maus. Germany's unique super heavy tank, the heaviest tank in the world. It was developed since November 1941 while failing to fire a single shot in combat. Only two vehicles were built and both were captured by the Red Army in 1945. It is the heaviest tank of all time, weighing 189 tons and the best illustration of the dead end of the military thought of the Third Reich. Ironically, the mouse was made by the Germans against a non-existent threat. When the Third Reich attacked the Soviet Union, the Germans faced a huge number of KV-1 and KV-2 heavy tanks, and it was not uncommon for encounters with these Soviet machines to turn nasty. After studying the trophies and intelligence data, the German general staff decided that by the spring of 1943, the USSR would have heavyweights of a new generation, even more formidable. Therefore, on November 29, 1941, Hitler instructed the Porsche firm to create a new heavy tank. March 5, 1942, order for a tank weighing about 100 tons received, and the firm Krupp. In the summer of 1942, Hitler agreed to increase the weight to 120 tons, as long as the new Porsche tank had armor as thick as possible and the gun as long as possible. At the same time, the maximum speed, according to the project, would reach only 20 kilometers per H. In fact, a slow-moving super-heavy tank would have been a mobile fortress. Later, Krupp proposed an alternative armament option of a 149 millimeter gun. But even this gun on tests penetrated 190 millimeter armor from a kilometer and at an angle of inclination of the armor of 30 degrees. At the same time, the shells were unitary and the frontal armor of the Krupp tank had to be made of a bent sheet 250 mm thick, which guaranteed difficulties in production. While endless changes were made to the project, the tank was getting heavier and grew to 180 tons. But the British aviation interfered with the plans of the designers, which from March 1943 regularly bombed the most important factories in the Rhine Valley. Therefore, on May 14, 1943, Hitler and other top officials of the Reich were able to show only a full-size model of the tank and a smaller model, but driving. Hitler approved the rapid mass production of the novelty, but on the night of July 25th, 26, the British destroyed the tank factory in Essen. Production of hulls and turrets of the Maus was slowed down for seven eight months. In November 1943, it was decided to stop serial production of the super heavy monster altogether. Only two chassis and one turret were to be completed. However, on December 23, 1943, the first Maus, with a mock-up of the turret, went on its first test run. The powerful 1200 horsepower MB 509 engine required gasoline with an octane rating of at least 77 so regular tank gasoline had to be mixed with aviation gasoline. On the other hand, thanks to the electric transmission, the primary motor rotated the electric generator, and that, the tracks, the tank, even with a weight of almost 190 tons, was easy to control. But on March 15, 1944, the mouse bogged down on the range, going into the swampy ground for more than a meter and a half. Meanwhile, for the second mouse, the turret with a pair of 128mm and 75mm guns was completed. To the left of the guns was mounted a 7.92mm MG34 machine gun with electric trigger. The tank could hold 68 128mm rounds, 175mm rounds, and 1,000 rounds of ammunition. The frontal armor of the hull reached a thickness of 200mm, the turret 220mm. At the end of June and the second mouse began to drive on the range. Off-road, it spent 350 liters of fuel for only 10 kilometers of travel. Later, the gasoline engine was replaced by a diesel engine MV, 517 of the same power. Originally, such motors were made for torpedo boats. At the same time, the Krupp company persistently continued to complete other hulls and turrets of already unnecessary tanks in the midst of the World War. Finally, in March 1945, the second of the built mouse went to the front. But the attempt to use the miracle weapon turned out to be a complete failure. 
On the night of April 21, 22, 1945, Soviet tankers of the 53rd Guards Brigade captured the town of Stamlager, where the German general staff had its headquarters. Asterisk, 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 translated with www.deepl.com slash translator, free version. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. A mouse was supposed to defend this most important facility of the Third Reich, but the machine had an untimely engine failure, and it broke down so inconveniently that it could not even shoot thickly along the streets. Therefore, before fleeing, the Germans blew up their own mouse. The super-heavy tank was not able to make a single shot in the battle and went to the winners. According to the memories of Vasily Arkhipov, the commander of the 53rd Brigade, the tanks were so big that even the Royal Tiger would seem very small next to it. Why tanks and not tank? It was Arkhipov's tankers who captured the first three Royal Tigers in August 1944. Many years later, one event could be superimposed on another, especially in literary processing. So Arkhipov's 1981 memoirs mention three trophy extra heavy tanks and the first mouse remained on the range. In the summer of 1945, Soviet troops found the tank in inoperable condition and with marks from German shells. In the fall of 1945, on the chassis of this mouse, put the turret from the second, loaded on a railway platform, and in May 1946, brought to the famous range in Kubinka. There, the huge trophy was fired four times from 122 mm cannon and then towed to the museum. Soviet experts noted that the vertical hull sides of the mouse could be penetrated with the existing 100 mm gun, whose projectile had greater armor penetration than the 122 mm. So why was the mouse not a masterpiece of tank building, but its greatest dead end? The Germans created a new tank for three years, and this during the World War, when every day is literally worth its weight in gold. The result of several years of hard work, huge sums of money and constant improvements, only two machines. And the first mouse never left the range, and the second simply could not reach the enemy. Prospects of serial production were suppressed by the British aviation. Instead of a practical fighting machine, the designers of the Third Reich created a monster many times heavier than any other tank. With a maximum speed of only 20 kilometers per H and fuel consumption by tanks, the crew of the Maus had to hope that the enemy would drive itself to the right place. And for transportation by rail, the tank required a special platform at the same time, Maus, despite the thick armor, was vulnerable to the shells of existing at the time of its creation guns. Its engine and tracks were not characterized by reliability, and it's hard to even imagine how much a mass-produced vehicle would have cost. Back in 1943, the Germans themselves abandoned the project, but continued to finalize unnecessary tanks. Therefore, despite its impressive appearance, the Maus is the greatest dead end of tank thought.